Call to order the meeting of the Verona Common Council on Monday, March 11th, uh, 7.01 p.m. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll have the roll. <clears throat> Alderperson Cronin? Present. Alderperson Gaskell? Here. Alderperson Journey? Here. Alderperson Kemp? Here. Alderperson Cole? Here. Alderperson Posey? Here. Alderperson Riki? Here. Alderperson Touche? Present. Full House, thank you for uh, everyone for making it. Um, next we'll move on to item four, uh, public comment. If anyone from the public wishes to comment, now would be the time to do so. Hey, good evening. I'm Aaron Aspenson. I'm the store planning director for Festival Foods, um, and this is Grant Dukach from Excel Engineering. He's our civil engineer. Uh, we're here tonight just to answer any questions about the Festival Foods store. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else uh, wishing to make a public comment? All right, seeing uh, uh, nobody rushing up to the mic, we'll move up to item five. Uh, that is approval of the minutes from the February 25th, 2019 Common Council meeting. Uh, questions, comments, motions? Move approval. Motion by Alder Cole. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Kemp. Last chance for corrections? Seeing none. All those in favor of approving the minutes from the February 25th, 2019 Common Council meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. And the minutes are approved. Um, next up, we'll move on to item six, which is mayor's business. Uh, uh, the first one under A is the appointment of a citizen member of the Tourism Commission. Uh, for that, I am uh, nominating Pat Worley, who is a member of the Verona Area Performing Arts Board. Um, I think she'd be a great addition. Um, she's also a thoughtful commentator on city issues as well. Um, and she uh, uh <laughs> will only be on for about a month before she has to be reappointed. So that's both, you know, so she can see if she likes it or not. But I, I think she'd be a great addition. So a motion to uh, approve the appointment would be in order. Make a motion to approve the um, nomination for the Tourism Committee, Commission. Second. Mo <laughs> motion by Alder Journey, second by Alder Riki. All those in favor of approving Pat Worley to the Tourism Commission, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that passes. Uh, next up, I'm going to turn it over to Chief Anderson uh, to give us the Fitroni EMS 2018 annual report. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for uh, thank you to the mayor for inviting me to come chat with you this evening. Um, most I have one of those jobs that most people don't like to see me. These things are things are going pretty bad. So uh, I always appreciate being invited to come kind of talk with you and kind of do a, a state of the district uh, update for you. You should have been in your packets, I believe, the our 2018 um, annual report. Um, you can read just as well as I can read to you. So I'll just kind of give you the down and dirty um, update of where we're at, where we ended with 2018, put up, put up some highlights for you and give you an opportunity to ask uh, any questions about um, where we're going and what we're doing. So I broke it down into three different sections. I changed it a little bit from what Chief Merlin had in there. And um, for those of you who are, are unaware of, of what Fitrona is, um, I, I know you were a joint municipal district, right? We serve both the city of, of Verona as well as the city of Fitchburg and the Verona Township. Um, currently, we run two ambulances. One of those is actually just across the way here at 101 Lincoln. The other one that's located up in Fitchburg full time is at the Marketplace Station, uh, Marketplace Drive. If you're going down uh, McKee Road, it's right behind the mg &E station there. So currently, our district has two stations. Um, as you're I'm hopef hopefully aware of when you passed our budget for next year, that third ambulance is actually slated to start on October 1st of next year. So we're kind of knee deep, I feel like almost over my head, but um, I'm gonna call it knee deep at this point about hiring um, seven new staff to actually staff that ambulance as well as uh, purchasing an ambulance and buying all the stuff that needs to go in it. So kind of been very busy lately in, in that process. A um, couple other resources we have, they're also listed in that book for you. Um, about three years ago, Epic, uh, Epic grant we got actually gives us a bike medic team. 
So actually you have two bicycles that are staffed with uh, some first aid equipment, a handful of medications that are in there, some AEDs. The primary use for that bike is actually for EPIC's user group meeting. Uh, we have uh, about a handful of people who trained additionally for that, and uh, they can get through that EPIC campus much faster than we can on our feet or try to drive around on an ambulance. Uh, and then the last resource we actually have is we call it Car 15. It's, a, it's, it's an expedition. Um, and that's primarily myself and my deputy chief, Jeff Dostalik, who um, use it for a, a multiple different things. We tend to first respond with it. So if, if that Verona ambulance is out, we're waiting for a, a unit from somewhere else. Technically, they're usually <coughs> Fitchburg. Or if both of our units out, that's City of Madison, that's Middleton. So that ambulance is coming from a ways out. So we actually first respond in that car and can, uh, most of our equipment's interchangeable. We actually just pass all that equipment and, and get that care and get those people out the door. Um, had to do a hospital minutes. Um, ten, it, it's been some pretty good, some pretty good response, good stories with that vehicle. Um, we go and lend a hand on multiple vehicle, multiple patient accidents. We can kind of take over that management of scene um, while we allow the ambulance then to start transporting people while we handle that. So that's the resources that uh, we have here in our district. 14 full-time paramedics. Um, that's what it takes to staff those two stations. Um, with that, we have a, kind of a middle layer of um, little middle layer of management or supervisory abilities, and we have two lieutenants. Um, with that third station, we'll hire a third one. Essentially, that that paramedic they still run in the ambulance. They still uh, run with those shifts, but they're kind of assigned to that station. There's one at each station. They manage vehicles, vehicle maintenance, um, kind of staff issues at those stations, supplies. There are our our second hand, myself um, and Jeff. We're above those uh, outside of those 14. So 14 14 medics plus myself and Jeff as two administrators who are primarily here during the weekdays. Um, we'll hear some evenings and some weekends as well, covering some of those shifts and uh, do things we need to do above and beyond. And we also actually have a part-time bookkeeper. She does about 12 hours a week and comes in and really manages. She she writes checks and and says mostly does most of the the budgeting type stuff. Get gathers gathers data for me. Um, so that is our staff: um, two full timers, 14 uh, or two administrators, 14 full timers, and our part-time um, manager. And then we're about to increase that to 21 full time medics. Um, with that third ambulance opening up and who knows how many LTEs to kind of cover that position. And that's the LTE part of it. I have about 10 um, limited term employees, we call them. They're not guaranteed hours. They cover our sick time, our vacation times, and kind of those last minute notices. Um, so that is our staff. Um, again, what you see in your, your book there where we ended 2018 was 3,245 times our ambulance got called out. So that number continues to grow for, uh, for some for perspective. That is 6% above where we were last year and 9% above where we were in 2016. Um, we actually have traced back 40. This is actually starting the middle of our 41st year of operations. We've tracked back our, our growth for 41 years worth of uh, EMS service. And our average over those 41 years is actually about a 5% growth. So we budget for about a 3% because some of those years go down, some of those years go up. But um, that's where we've been at the last for the last two years is at 6% and, and 9%. As far as a couple of the other numbers you're gonna see in there is the breakdown of where do we go? Uh, these are the questions that always get asked for us. That's a pretty big district. So of, of all the calls we respond to, those 3,000 some calls, 62% of those actually occur in the city of Fitchburg, 26% in the city of Verona, 4% in the town of Verona, and then just about seven to eight times, I gotta make sure my math adds up in there, <laughs> it's about seven to eight times or so, uh, percent, we're actually outside of the district. And what is that is we work with the county partners as they work with us as well. If both of our ambulances is out, somebody from our, from our neighbors needs to respond in, we do the same. Um, so that is actually responding into Belleville, Mount Horeb, the city of Madison, the town of Madison, Middleton, um, be it they need another ambulance because all theirs are out. Um, or if we go to our neighbors to the south and the southwest, um, we are a higher level of service, being a paramedic level of service. So if they're... I want to say over their heads, but they need some additional skills, need additional medications. We respond out there. We hop in the back of their ambulance with all of our bags. Um, we provide that additional care. Within our own district, that actually gets broken down into 64% of our calls occur in Fitchburg, 32% in the city of Verona, and 4% in the town. Uh, so that's where we're at with, uh, with uh, the breakdown of where we go. Um, another other couple other fun, fun facts to write, point out in your, in your annual report is on pages, in nine, pages 9 and 10. Is actually a map of our district. We've been tracking for a long time now because it's difficult with um, with where zip codes occur in our district that it's difficult to kind of track where we truly go. Um, so years ago, came up with this beautiful template. We have 12 zones in our in our in our um, district. Um, so you'll see in there on the first map that's on page nine. You'll see what our district look like looks like. There's a couple stars in there where our where our two stations currently are at. 
i don't mean believe the star made it in there for that third station that will actually be up in zone number four um, way up in that northeast corner area if you look on page 10 there um, more information for you there's that's the numbers um, so the first number you're going to see the three listed there the first number there is the percentage of calls we actually get in that zone so if you can think of that bottom right hand corner um, or this, this i think zone 11 um, if anybody in the public is wondering what i'm talking about later this actually and your report is published on our website uh, the, it's one of the tabs right on top they can go and look at it but zone 11 essentially it's south not quite the southeasternest most corner of fitchburg i would say 99 percent of the calls that come in that zone 12 that actually is where oak hill is um, so i don't want to say those numbers are skewed those are real calls um, but that's what occurs in there otherwise if you see more of those rural areas that makes up the lower percent of the calls you can see where those high dense populations are that's where most of our car our, our calls are Underneath the two of those, you have two other numbers. One says Fitchburg with a, with a response time in it. The next one below that says Verona with a response time in it. For the most part, we have, uh, we have uh, four ambulances. I just mentioned we have four ambulances. We run two of those primarily, and those numbers are 44 and 45. They can be moved wherever, um, but we, we usually run 44 out of Fitchburg. We run 45 out of Verona. So we have to make some assumptions when we pick up those numbers that 44 is the Fitchburg ambulance, 45 is the Verona ambulance, um, and then our backup ambulances will throw in there as well. But when you see those response times up there, that is how long it takes for that for Fitch, the Fitchburg <coughs> ambulance, that's 44, to get to places in our district. The number on that is Verona. So that's the, how long it takes for the Verona ambulance to get to those places in our district. And that's about the best tracking we can do but the goal is, and so it's uh, National Fire Protection Agency, though it's not, it's not law, it's not regulation, it is actually best recommended practices for, for fire and EMS services, um, recommends that we get to 90% of our places in less than eight minutes. So you can kind of, that's those are the numbers that you'll see in that chart there is what we compare it to. Um, and as you can see, most of those places we're hitting within five minutes. And that's, that's actually um, looking at urban and uh, they, they break it down into urban and rural environments where we kind of fit into this kind of suburban, not quite one, not quite the other one. Um, but those are the numbers that we use to guide our response times and really station placement. So that, that chart that you see there, zones one through 12, is really what drove that station of the, the placement of station number three for that third ambulance, which if you want to know, will be ambulance number 43 um, is what will go there. Um, so that's what you'll see kind of in that map there. The second thing I want to just really touch base on is the finances. Um, so for 2019, as you can, um, you probably saw in some of the draft we saw before, it's in that chart as well. We will look to be somewhere between about 50 and 60 percent of our operating budget is, is covered by user fees. Um, the other essentially then 40 to 50 percent of that is covered by the municipalities. So that's, that's the tax dollars that, that you provide to me every year. Um, the remaining of that said what's divided up between our municipalities is based on equalized value that comes from is that going to be the county or the state whoever, whoever gives me those numbers uh the state i believe i always have to help help finding it every year because it's buried that's what brian does for me um so uh equalized value from the remaining three districts we have is so fitchburg actually pays them for 40 is at 49.2 percent city of verona is 45.6 percent and then the town of verona actually pays for 5.1 percent so what's left over after user fees from what we charge for our base rates, um, what we get from interest on any accounts we have, <clears throat> is divided up between the, essentially the value of our three municipalities. Um, we did up, up um, we did increase our user fees for 2019. Um, we had not increased them for two years, so we increased them. <coughs> when we look at what our, our neighbors do, which is really the city of, um, city of Sun Prairie, city of Middleton, and the city of Madison, who are comparables in the county. We kind of match what they do. Um, we're not the highest, we're not the lowest, um, but if we increase those user fees, then that helps offset some of that tax base. Last thing in finance is, so March 5th, just a couple of weeks ago, is when we had our official external audit. Um, we have somebody come in every year. It's Johnson & Block, is a CPA firm, comes in every year, takes a look at our books, make sure that we're doing okay. Um, we haven't got the official um, report back from them. That should be coming, I believe, within a couple of weeks. But just off of the cuff, we came in about 5% under budget for 2018. So that's by my first year, so I'm going to hang on to that one for as long as I can. <laughs> um, Brian, I think, set me up, former Chief Merlin, set me up pretty good to do okay my first year. Uh, with eight new staff or seven new staff this year, we'll, we'll see if I can manage to pull that off for a, another year. Um, last section in there is really just the vision to kind of give you the heads up of, of what Fitron is doing and, and where we're going in the future um, to come back and talk to you. So, so the biggest thing in our plan right now is ambulance number three. 
That'll bring seven new people on for us, a third ambulance. Um, and uh, right now we're roughly guessing about 400 calls a year coming from just the three months in that upper left-hand corner. That is a big unknown for us. A lot of that has to do with what's gonna happen with the town of Madison and the city of Fitchburg, um, how that's gonna play out within the next couple of years. Um, that location alone is going to be, as I mentioned, we respond into our neighbors' um, territories when they need assistance or they need an advanced level of care. That new position for us is, is, is prime for every ambulance coming up Highway 14 in um, state Madison, city of Madison Station number six on Badger Road. Um, that's the other one we're going to start kind of, I don't say competing with them, um, but where anything coming down um, the Beltline from anywhere east of town is going to be put us in that prime location. So that's truly a, an unknown number what that ambulance number three is going to get for us. Um, this last year, we've increased our outreach. Uh, if you haven't noticed, we, both uh, libraries and both municipalities, we've actually started doing community CPR classes. Every other month, we do a community CPR, and every other month, we do it's called the Stop the Bleed program for the public. <laughs> We've had some actually phenomenal turnout at the library. We partnered with the Verona High School to do some Stop the Bleed training with their, uh, their faculty, um, as well as uh, we offer CPR classes out to our community. So some pretty fun things we've been doing. As far as long-term goes, again, that kind of, that town of Madison is just a huge unknown for us. Um, so we're planning right now as in 2022, I believe the number is, 2023, it, it'll, it'll happen in 2022 that there's that small little triangle of the town of Madison south of the Beltline, <coughs> west of Rimrock Road, and east of Highway 14. It's not a very big area, but it generated about 350 calls last year. Um, so that becomes the city of Fitchburg essentially overnight. Uh, so that's kind of our, that's the number we work with. Whatever happens up there remains to be seen, but that's the number we plan with. So when we actually march that number out, plus that three to 5% increase over the next couple of years, um, in 2023, so in less than four years from now, I'm actually already up to 4,500 calls. That's 1,000 calls from what we hit this year already. So uh, st industry standard of practice says it's one ambulance for about every 1,000 one to 1,500, which means I'm going to actually be coming back in a couple of years and asking for ambulance number four. Um, so that's actually a lot of uh, logistics behind that, a lot of, uh, crea I'm going to call it creative budgeting, or right? like how we're going to, how do I keep the best costs for the, the, keep those user fees coming in yet keep the cost as low as I can to the taxpayers yet still provide the service that we, we need to provide to the citizens of everywhere we're, we're serving. Um, I keep marching that out in 2030, so 11 years from now, that's actually 5,500 calls in ambulance number five. So just, I'm gonna give you that vision of, of where we're going and what, keep, what keeps me up every morning or wakes me up every morning to come to work and, and how are we gonna do this um, as cost effective as we can. Um, so other part of that comes with five ambulances. Um, we're up to, by then I'm up to about 38 full-time employees with we only have two administrators and that's it. So lots of ideas um, we have in the, in, the, uh, in the works about how we're gonna make this happen, um, how we create this, this better infrastructure to manage um, that number of vehicles on the streets, again, and keep those costs down. So in a nutshell, I think that was my five minutes. I told Adam I would try to keep it to, probably a little longer than that. Um, in a nutshell, that's what that annual report says. Um, this time I'll take any questions if you have any. Any, uh, uh, Alder Cole. I just want to say thank you for putting this together. It was very easy to read, and I can tell you put a lot of thought into it. And thank thanks you. to you and your staff uh, for providing a really great service to our community. Thanks. I will share that with them. Uh, Alder Touche. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, through, through some personal experience I've had over the last year, I've, I've learned the values of tourniquets yes. and, and knowing how to apply them appropriately and so on. And thinking about your community outreach on teaching CPR, it, is there any consideration on, in, in, or would you consider, I should say, really um, including maybe a tourniquet portion to that class because uh, I know it, they save lives? Sure. So that's actually the Stop the Bleed programs I mentioned. We've started just rolling that out the last couple of months um, in Fitchburg and Verona as well. Uh, we can put it in, we can easily put it into a CPR class, but that's that own class we've actually started to break out and do it's its own 45 minutes worth of bleeding control and tourniquet application. We did one, I believe it was in early December up in the, with the Fitchburg Library, um, and we had a full, um, a full house is, is 15 people is what we cap it at, but we had 15 people um, at that class. It's absolutely, it's out there. We're starting to increase our marketing, our, you know, marketing as well, um, because absolutely, it, it saves lives and we can't get there that fast. So it really depends on, on civilians and the general public knowing how to do that. Right, thank you. Alder Turney. So um, I noticed that you have um, 
as far as patient primary complaints, um, alcohol abuse, and I'm just curious whether or not there's any drug overdose in there or not. So that one's a hard one to, I don't wanna say it's a hard one to break out. So actually every month um, at our commission meetings, and I don't know if that gets distributed down to the council as well, we, we do actually report that every month to our EMS commission about car, um, calls we give Narcan on. Um, so we, I can't, it's difficult to separate it out by chief complaint because it's usually unresponsive or an overdose or something. <laughs> um, we, off the cuff, I'm saying we average probably two to three of those a month. Um, again, it's hard to, I, I report it every month because I, I can pull the nature of the report. There are some um, cardiac arrest patients where it's just protocol. Um, let's just try this and see if it works versus those knowns. There are a lot more we don't know about, uh, but that is something we do report up every month and you're, you're not gonna see in this report though, wouldn't be a bad idea kind of given the nature of what's going on across our nation at this time to report that up every month or uh, in our annual report. And, and then just out of curiosity, is, so, is there seem to be an age range at all if with the overdose? Off of the top of my head, it tends to be, if I'm remembering right, even national, we, Fitrona is, sticks with what the county and the state and nationally wise see. Off the top of my head, it's that 25 to 45 year old range. It, we, we match with what's going on across the nation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Uh, Alder Posey? I, I also wanted to thank you for this entire packet and especially for the future vision and where we're looking to be because we are moving so quickly in that direction mm -hmm. that to hear that information is so extremely helpful as we're looking to budgets for this year and beyond and what we've got coming up it's really helpful to hear that directly from you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. That's why, again, I thank you for the opportunity to come because it's, it's not that far in the future. Other uh, questions or comments from the council? I'll just uh, uh, add myself and just say, yeah, I echo the thanks. Um, I was on, on the EMS commission for some years and it, it was great to see how it worked. Um, I do want to say I think that, yeah, adding the Narcan stuff I think would be really useful. It would be useful. It was useful for, for me as an EMS commission member just to see sure. where we were. Um, and then I also want to say if you look at, not that people can see it necessarily out in the audience, but if you look at uh, zones five and six, which is the bulk of Verona, the response times are very good. So that that's really good to see. I would I don't want to, to mess with the, the rectangles because they're nice, but uh, as Verona expands south, I would be curious to see what the response times were for the scenic Ridge and Cathedral Point neighborhoods because they're in zone 10. And I imagine they're a little bit different than the far corners. And maybe something we look at is making smaller units because we run into the same thing. There's parts of Fitchburg south of Lacey Road that have significantly grown um, that that are, are, are users of ours that, that start to skew the, the, predominantly it's rural and is not a lot of calls, but um, that is something I'll take in mind. Maybe we can start looking at that as well. Yeah, because I definitely want to make sure Scenic Ridge and Cathedral Point are well covered as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Anyone else? Seeing none. Right. Thank th you for your time. Thank you. Uh, with that, we will move on to item seven, announcements. Uh, anyone from the council have any announcements? Seeing none, we will move on to the administrator's report. Mr. Sayer. Thank you. Uh, in your packet was the administrator report. I'll just briefly go through a few things in there. Uh, we do have an active shooter training, which is being held by the police department on April 9th at the Sugar River United Methodist Church. Uh, most importantly, the public is invited to attend that, but pre-registration is required and persons must be at least 18 years and older for that. Dane County Cities and Villages will have a meeting on Wednesday at 5 p.m. in DeForest. Uh, if you are interested in that, one of the topics is uh, Stacy Reese from the City of Madison will be there, and uh, she is the Sustainability Coordinator for Madison. We have a Tourism Commission meeting next Wednesday at 2 p.m. at City Hall. We currently have four public hearings. They'll be upcoming at the April Plan Commission meeting. Uh, those include a public hearing at 841 North Main Street for a senior living project, a public hearing at 509 West Verona Avenue for a hotel and event center for the Sugar Creek Commons project, uh, ENS Enterprises on Investment Court has a public hearing, and finally Hammer Forge CrossFit uh, has a public hearing and they're located at 606 West Verona Avenue. Update on the assessor is we have transitioned over to associated appraisal. Uh, Dean Peters has been assigned to the city of Verona, so Dean will be handling uh, most uh, activities for the city. Similar to past years, the city has partnered with uh, the Verona Area Education Foundation on banners. 
banners this year will be installed along East Ronan Avenue. Uh, they, are be, they will be printed in the near future and installed most likely sometime in April. And then finally, uh, we have canceled the council meeting that was planned for the 25th, and we'll have a council meeting on March 18th at 6 p.m. I think we have one person who cannot make that, potentially. Is there anyone else who cannot make that? Okay, well, just make sure you mark your calendars for March 18th at, at 6 p.m., and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions on the administrator's report? <laughs> Um, I'm going to add one thing for myself. Um, regarding the uh, mistake the tax assessor made, um, part of the reason we weren't able to just refund the money was because of st state TIF law. Um, and currently I, I had a good meeting with staff from John Erfenbach and uh, Representative Sandy Pope to try to get state law changed. At the moment there is a, in Governor Evers' budget, there is a TIF change, which would allow us to, to refund the money in some manner to, 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 to the public. Um, I don't think I need to, to explain any, to anyone how uncertain things are at the state uh, level and that just because it's in Governor Evers' budget doesn't mean it's going to end up anywhere else. But it is being worked on um, and, and we're going to try to get it straightened out. Um, with that, uh, we'll move on to the engineer's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, not a lot of activity this uh, last couple of weeks due to the weather, <laughs> but the contractor is continuing to work on the shelter at Fireman's Park on the splash pad. As uh, soon as the weather finally melts and we can get uh, equipment on site, the utility work will start up there. Uh, city staff is still evaluating or in the final process of evaluating the RFPs or the proposals they received for the East Side Interceptor and Relief Force Main. I believe that will be on the uh, 18th agenda. And, <coughs> excuse me, finally, uh, for an update for everybody for the high school the transportation projects, City staff and AECOM at the direction of the Public Works Director have been meeting weekly with the uh, high school's engineer, JSD, to review the traffic uh, plans and the transportation improvements, along with weekly, daily, and almost hourly communications between the groups to make sure that everything is going smoothly and we're moving towards a final completion for these plans so that they can get out to bid. Any questions on the uh, engineer's report? Oh, Alder Cronin. I know there have been um, some statewide warnings about increased risk of flooding in the spring. Is that a concern with what's happening construction-wise at Fireman's Park? I, I really don't know that I could answer that one. Uh, the city staff has been handling that. I haven't heard anything from them that there's concerns that there's be those flooding over there. Um, if there becomes an issue, uh, Marty and the construction crew will be out there to make sure that they get it directed to where it needs to be and there aren't any issues. I just want to say thank you for working so diligently with the school district. I, I understand it's a tight timeline and that, you know, the city has to, to deal with the information given to it, but, but <coughs> thanks to everyone who's working on that. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to item 10, committee's re committee reports. Uh, uh, 10A is Finance Committee, Alder Cronin. Yes, for agenda item 10A1, uh, recommending, I make a motion recommending approval of payment of the bills in the amount of $1,184,751.99. Motion by Alder Cronin, is there a second? Second by Alder Kemp, Alder Cronin. Uh, by way of explanation, some of the larger bills uh, include a bond payment of $462,585. Um, there was a payment to the municipal organization that's a consortium agreement for the police department in the amount of $76,515. Um, we do have a payment, um, final payment to the assessor um, and those are probably the largest. Uh, any uh, discussion on paying the bills? Seeing none, all those in favor of paying the bills in the amount specified signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And that motion passes. Alder Cronin. Uh, next agenda item is A2. Uh, we are making a motion to recommend approval of the claim for vehicle damage um, in the amount of $2,367.17 to Mr. Richard Jensen. 
Uh, this is based on the mm -hmm. estimate. Motion by Alder Cronin. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Posey. Alder Cronin. Should the bill exceed that amount, it would need to come back to finance for approval. Thank you for that uh, explanation. Questions, comments on the uh, motion? All those in favor of paying the notice of claim for vehicle damage in the amount specified to the individual specified, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And that motion passes. Uh, Alder Cronin. Next item on the agenda is 10A3, discussion regarding the 2019 preliminary borrowing estimates. Uh, we did discuss this in the Finance Committee um, to give a little more detail. Uh, that includes uh, the third $1 million payment to the Verona Area School District for the road, uh, $450,000 for County Highway M reconstruction, $300,000 for the pedestrian and bike trail improvements and construction, uh, $50,000 in additional change order payment for Fireman's Park, which would include um, the creation of a, another sidewalk uh, to make the uh, access to the, the park safe. Um, and $450,000 for the public works facility design. Um, for the fire department, there's $1.3 million uh, for the purchase of an additional ladder truck. Um, and then uh, in the enterprise funds, there's $1.2 million for the Lincoln Street stormwater facility. So that would bring our total debt um, to $4,750,000. <coughs> And this is, of course, just a discussion item. Um, I, I, I would like to add, too, that this is uh, significantly less than the amount um, we borrowed last year. Um, and I think we should continue to kind of getting get our borrowing under control and keep it going down year after year. Um, but anyways, uh, any, uh, Alder Gaskell. So what kind of feedback is staff seeking? Mr. Sayre? Sure, we wanted to bring this to the council and the finance committee just for discussion. As we kind of put the documents together, it's about a 90 to 100 day window for hours to put the necessary paperwork in place. And we wanted to make sure that we're gonna come to you kind of once that paperwork's in place and not have significant changes. So we, we kind of wanted to take this to the council and the finance committee to make sure you're comfortable with this before we did all this behind the scenes work to find out there are items the council potentially wanted to pull out or make changes to. So. Uh, we're not looking for action. We're just looking for any feedback or any direct comments that would help us as we kind of work on this. Um, have you seen any justification or has it been shared with you for the new fire truck, why it's necessary? Sure, we've, we, we've met with Chief Giver and the, the intent of the fire truck is the current fire truck is, uh, it's from 1997, so it's 22 years old. Um, I think Chief Giver is concerned just long term of at what point is there going to be significant maintenance problems with that truck. Uh, my understanding from, from meeting with him was um, that this has been pushed back, I guess, a couple times as part of the budget process. Um, but the need is kind of being driven by the fact the truck has it's got some age to it and it's got just, you know, at 22 years, there's a good chance problems might start coming up. So that's what's driving the need for the truck. Um, the articulating portion of it. Uh, that's the piece that's been talked about before. Uh, the intent of that is actually on a typical fire truck, you have a straight ladder that kind of comes out. Um, what he's looking at is articulating platform that would actually kind of come out and then bend and give them the ability to have access to certain buildings, especially at Epic. So um, there's an added cost to that, obviously, for that articulating piece. But the driver mostly behind that truck is the fact that it's that 22 years old. Can we get an estimate for a truck that's not the beast? so I can see the difference. Can you share that at some point, please? Not right now, but just send out an email. What's, what's, a, what's a beast? Well, Without the we have, the beast is the expensive one. Oh, what, the, what is our, if we were to <laughs> literally replace it with the newest version of the existing truck, I'd like to know what that cost is, please. Sure, so without that articulating piece, that, that piece alone is $300,000 approximately. So you can take, the, 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 the price that we, we had talked with Chief Giver about was approximately 1.5 million for that new truck. He believes he can get about $200,000 that trade in of the existing truck. And then the articulating piece is, is approximately $300,000. So without that and just a straight stick, I think as he called it to me, it'd be approximately 1.2 million. And then you can take 200,000 off as part of that selling the existing truck. So you'd be looking at borrowing 1 million, if that helps, if that makes sense. Alder Cole. I think 
Mr. Sayer answer my question. So we are trading the other one in. It isn't, we aren't keeping the one from 1997 in addition to getting this new one. Uh, my understanding is it's a trade in to a different municipality in some place in Illinois. Uh, any further discussion on the 2019 preliminary borrowing estimates? Seeing <coughs> none, uh, anything further from finance? Alder Cole. Cronin. Cronin. Cron oh, Alder Cronin. That's all right. <laughs> uh, nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Thank you. Um, next up, we'll move on to 10B, Park Recreation and Welfare Committee. Alder Riki. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve a feasibility study for the remodeling of the existing public work facility to a recreation facility. Motion by Alder Riki. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alder Journey. Alder Riki. Thank you. The 2019 budget included $10,000 for a feasibility study for the remodeling of the existing public works facility to a recreation facility. On January 16th, 2019, the Parks and Recreation and Forestry Commission recommended approval of a feasibility study by KSW Construction Corporation to remodel the existing public works facility into a community recreational facility. The proposed study would take approximately eight to nine weeks to complete. Components of the study would include a review of the existing facility and programming needs, development of two or three conceptual layouts, a final report including floor plan, exterior images and a budget estimate and um, parks and forestry director dave walker and um, recreation director casey dudley are here to answer questions uh, alder touche then alder gaskell <coughs> thank you um yeah i saw this and you know first thing comes to mind is need and so I, i'm really wondering has a need study already been done so we know what we need before we hire someone to see if the public works facility will meet that need. I, I feel like the order's off here, unless the need, the need study's already been done. Uh, Mr. Sayer? Can anyone answer or that? Or Mr. Dudley? <coughs> I'll just go here. There hasn't been a need study, but over the years, the need has grown and grown. Currently, the rec department does, ha does not have anything available to use for any daytime programming whatsoever. We're beholden to the schools. Uh, we don't have any kind of facility for any kind of during the day program. Uh, also, we're getting squeezed in the gyms at the schools um, with more and more activities. Um, and we're gonna lose Sugar Creek um, gym next year. Uh, we currently use that two or three nights a week for youth basketball and stuff like that. So. The idea was we look at see if this is feasible at all to even move forward with it. So the idea was, is this something that can even be done before we look to move forward? So when you say done, done for what? I mean, again, I, I feel like we need to know what we need <coughs> before we decide or even spend $10,000 to decide if we can fill that need. I understand you have some needs, but you know, what's the data behind it? You know quantity of gym space. I mean, I I mean, I, I personally, I feel like a needs study needs to be done before a feasibility study. Certainly. To, to see if they lined up. So, I mean, I would rather propose that we either take this $10,000, turn it into a needs study. The public works building isn't going anywhere. It's going to be a while before we build a new one. I think we have time. Um, and, and I agree. I mean, you know, relying on the school district, it, it can be difficult sometimes, especially on availability. They're starting to fill their facilities as well. Makes sense, but I think we need to know what we need. And will the facility work for us? I don't know. I know remodeling is expensive. Um, might be easier to sell the building and, and you take that money for land somewhere else. Um, but my position is I'm not interested. I'm not going to uh, vote yes on this without a need study. Thank you. Alder Gaskell, and then myself, and then Alder Kemp. And just to follow up with the phrase, is that something that we should be paying for? Because Thanks, <laughs> Andy. <laughs> Casey, you w have a good handle on what our needs are, right? Is that something that you can spend a couple weeks on and put something together rather than paying a consultant to figure out our needs? Yeah, I could put together kind of what our current usage is of the other facilities that we have. Okay. And basically the lack of opportunity um, that we currently 
have with not having anything available during the daytime? I think if you could do that, that'd be great. Um, I, what I would also like to know is if the consultant, I'm assuming the budget estimate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good day. All right, you can still see me, so I'm just going to keep talking. Um, the budget estimate, I assume, is for construction for retrofitting the building. Can yes. we also get some sort of uh, estimate know. on what it's going to cost to operate that facility? I don't know if they can do it, but just generally, if you know, once we have this building, what what are we spending to keep the lights on every day when we got Absolutely. basketball in there? So the utility costs, all the operations. Yep. Yeah, we could definitely yep. do that. Because yes, Sugar Creek will be gone, but we might have an opportunity there to have what we want built from the ground up. So just to True. keep that in mind, True. I think that would be awesome. Um, we're going to take a, a, a 30 second break while we, we figure this out. Um. And then, like, a completely different mayor is after it's come back up. All right. Oh, we're not on. We're not recording. All right. So 30 seconds was optimistic. Um. It's all about this weather, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we are we are back on. I'm gonna. Uh, all the guys come. Uh, from a procedural standpoint, is there a way we can not take action on this until we can see what Casey's able to give us in terms of a need study, so that we don't vote it down necessarily? Um, someone someone could make a motion to postpone, which is a, a debatable motion, which is different than table <laughs> okay. tabling it. So, right. um, but anyways, I'm gonna uh, uh, do my self click. I think this even even with a couple week delay to, to figure out needs, I think this this study is is premature. I think it's gonna be a couple years before at least before we move out of the current public works building. And I worry that any study is gonna get stale by the time we're, we're ready. I also feel like we haven't had a discussion at the city level with what we want to do with that building. Like, there's a lot of different competing things we could do with it. We could sell it to offset you know, the borrowing for the, the future public works building. It, it, there might be some other need that com comes up. You know, someone, might be interested, someone else might be interested in buying it. You know, if we could get a business in there, an incubator. I, I, I feel like I'm not saying I'm against a recreation center. I'm just saying I feel like we haven't had the discussion at the city level, so I wouldn't want to spend money on a study that we're not even going to use or that might expire by the time we're ready to do it. Um, so that's 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 kind of where I'm at. Um, Alder Kemp and then Alder Suchet. Um, I think Sarah, uh, Sarah basically got an answer, answered my question. Oh, Sarah uh, Alder Gaskell um, <laughs> essentially answered my question with her last comment, but I, I have to agree with you also, Mr. Mayor. I think um, given the amount of time that Public Works is still going to be in that building and we haven't had any discussion uh, with what to do with the old public works building i don't know if we should spend any any money at all uh, on a study um, i would personally uh, like to see some sort of um, recreational uh, community center in the city of verona i have children that play play sports and um, you know mr dudley is correct it, it does get crowded uh, so we're going to need to see something at some point um, but spending money on a study right now is probably premature Alder Touche, and then Alder Cole. I'm amicable to an independent study. I mean, I'm nothing against what you guys are able to do. I think that we can get some outside ideas on what maybe some other <laughs> communities are doing. Um, I'm, I, I welcome it. I'm, I'm, I, I think it would be much better use of the funds, and uh, I think you'll find getting some outside help would be beneficial to you as far as even a convincing argument on why we may or may not need things. Alder Cole. Uh, I guess I'm going to echo um, what you said about uh, postponing this, or I just think we need to also think about if we are going to look into getting a recreation facility, whether it's remodeling this public works facility or getting a new one, um, 
I think we need to think about the location too, because if um, what Mr. Dudley said, if they're looking for something for like daytime activities, um, maybe like for possible summertime use for children, I'm not necessarily sure that even that location clear out there is a great place for kids to bike to or walk to. Got to pass some, you know, cross some busy streets. So that's just something I was thinking of too. Like, cause, I mean, I I agree with Elder Kemp that I think we probably will need a recreational facility at some point, but I think location is definitely something we need to take into consideration. Um, further comments uh, or motions on the motion? How do we do this? Um, <laughs> th 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 there's a variety. We could, of course, obviously just have a straight up or down vote and, and vote no. And if it, if it got voted down, someone who had voted no could move for reconsideration. Um, we could also make a motion to um, postpone it um, until a, a specified time or until a specified event. Um, which uh, is different than tabling. A tabling would just be kind of setting aside for the duration of the meeting. Um, the main difference is a motion to table isn't debatable. A motion to postpone is debatable because it is a significant, you know, decision whether to, you know, do it now or come back to it in April or whenever. Um, so it, it, it just, like, I, I can't make any motions as the chair, but, you know, it kind of depends on the mood of the, the sure. council. Are there any repercussions for voting no down I mean, the road? I mean, if people vote no right now, then it's then it's not going to happen unless there's you know potential move to reconsideration. I don't know how long the study um, cost. Uh, the estimate that KSW gave us is um, how long we can hold that for, Mr. Sayer. I'm checking unless Mr. Dudley has that in front of him, but typically there's a date of how long this is going. 30 days and the date of it is January 14th so <laughs> so it probably it's probably not gonna be held much longer I guess is probably the bottom line Alder Riki I'd like to make a motion to reconsider yeah. in the future to postpone, postpone. it <coughs> to a future date um, any specific triggers or dates or anything like that, or just based on could staff we um, discretion? Get the preliminary needs research information from the directors, um, and then um, set a date based on when that would be ready. Okay. So a motion to postpone until the. Um, we get a uh, direction from the record until we get further research from the uh, uh, recreation director. Is that what I'm hearing? It's your motion, Heather. Yes. Yes. Okay. Motion by Alder Riki. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alder Gaskell. All those in favor of postponement uh, based on the conditions specified, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? And we will postpone that until we have further information. Um, anything further, Alderigi? That is all. All right, we'll move on to 10C Plan Commission. Alder Gaskell. Thank you. I would like to make a motion for approval of resolution number R-19-013, approving a precise implementation plan to, to allow for the construction of a 67... <coughs> 67,177 square foot festival foods grocery store at 660 Hometown Circle. <laughs> Motion by Alder Gaskell. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alder Kemp. Alder Gaskell. The proposed PIP will allow for the construction of a festival foods grocery store at 660 Hometown Circle. The city had approved a previous PIP for this project in November 2017. However, the applicant is proposing modifications to the building design, which require approval by the city. Plan Commission held the required public hearing on March 4th. 2019 and voted three to one to recommend for the approval. Thank you for that explanation. Um, any comments or questions on the resolution R-19-013? Seeing no discussion. Um, all those in favor of resolution number R-19-013, which is approving a precise implementation plan to allow for the construction of a 67,177 square foot festival foods grocery store at 660 Hometown Circle, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion passes. Alder Gaskell. 
Thank you. Item 10 C2, um, I'd like to recommend approval of ordinance number 19-938, repealing and re recreating Title 13, Chapter 2 of the Municipal Ordinance relating to the City's Floodplain Ordinance. Motion by Alder Gasco. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Riki. Alder Gasco. The proposed zoning text amendment would repeal and recreate the City's <coughs> Floodplain Ordinance. The proposed amendment is necessary to ensure compliance with the National Flood Insurance Program. Plan Commission held the required public hearing on March 4th, 2019 and voted 5-0 to zero to recommend for the approval. Thank you for that explanation. Um, and I, I guess I would just like to add that there, this, this came up at Plan Commission is that there was no significant changes to any floodplain stuff. This doesn't deal with stormwater either, um, but there'll be no, no changes that anyone would notice. This just kind of brings us in line with state and federal guidelines and things like that. Um, any further discussion? Oh, I'll I, I'm only curious, what prompted this adjustment? So Carla Fisher from AECOM is here, and she can she can help answer that question. Um, Mike? I turned it up, sorry. Um, the state issues a, um, like a template every couple of years that has updates based on federal law and state law. And so in 2017, they had issued one, and so we've been just working on updating that. Um, there's a couple items specific in the ordinance to Verona that would be any letters of map revision, and so we were waiting for one of those to come through before we updated it, so um, that's why we're here in 2019 getting it updated. So you can expect to see it every, I, I don't think the state's planning to do a new one anytime soon. We've been working with their floodplain coordinator, um, but you know, as those come up, we'll be doing updates here as well. Great, thank you. That's it. Um, any questions uh, or comments on the motion? <coughs> Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of ordinance uh, number 19-938, repealing and recreating title 13, <coughs> chapter two of the municipal ordinance relating to the city floodplain ordinance, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion passes. Uh, Alder Gaskell. Thank you. The last item, 10 <coughs> c is for discussion only regarding the initial concept review for a proposed 95-acre development containing a medical clinic, commercial uses, and multifamily uses to be located at 7278 Valley Road. Um, a developer has submitted a request for an initial concept review of this development that would contain a medical clinic, commercial uses, and multifamily uses. Uh, requires various approvals, including annexation, developer agreements, and plat approvals. The Plan Commission discussed the project on March 4th, and some of the comments included support for the overall medical use and clinic, support for smaller commercial uses, support for multifamily uses. One person had a desire for the developer to explore some single-family lots on parts of the property, and then general discussion regarding the roadway system in and around the development because of its proximity to um, now it's gone out of my head. What's the name of the school? Um, yes, to the school. But the school's on the other side of the road. And so the make Southwest sure you look at the map. Part. Yep. Uh, the council is <coughs> encouraged to provide feedback and recommendations to the applicant on the concept. No formal motion is required just because it's a conceptual review at this point. Thank you for that overview. Um, any uh, comments, feedback, questions? Alder Cronin. And then Alder Touche. Um, I just wanted to indicate that I have heard from multiple constituents about this development and their concerns regarding uh, the environmental impact on the Sugar River watershed and the Sugar River. Um, so just curious to see what kind of discussion is happening regarding that. Uh, Mr. Singh? Sure, as of right now, we've we just had some very high level discussions regarding stormwater, just conceptually where that water could potentially go. Um, you know, the details are not there yet, mostly from the standpoint of the developers trying to determine if the city is going to support development occurring on this piece of property. Um, they are in the process of acquiring it, so this is part of their due diligence process. Um, so we are aware of kind of those concerns that are out there. Those have been there kind of since the property was brought into the urban service area, you know, 10 years ago. Um, and that'll be a critical piece, you know, when the property develops of ensuring the protection of, of that watershed. Um, but beyond that broad, yes, it's being, it's going to be looked at. I don't have anything else at this time. I'll do <laughs> uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, as I'm looking at the 
uh, 2006 concept plan for this area, I like the concept for sure. And I think this development and just what, what, I, what I know about it now gets really close to it. I definitely like the senior living. I like the Dean Clinic. Uh, the, the, the portion in the middle that they kind of left as still yet to be figured out. I mean, I like in the concept that healthcare related for land use. I, I definitely really, really like the idea of this being a very healthcare focused area. I think it can benefit all of us. Um, I do have a concern about how it impacts the Southwest neighborhood plan and also any kind of connector road that we had potentially planned for with the school. And, and I say that because I had the opportunity to drive west towards Platteville uh, one morning during the week and was floored at how it was already backed up on the highway. And thinking that, oh boy, there's a high school coming in. This is gonna get really scary because it, it scared me driving, you know, 60 miles an hour around the bend and then running into, a, you know, approaching a bunch of cars that were stopped. And once we started adding high school traffic, needs for alternate paths into Verona, especially the high school, it's, you know, it's like, how's this going to fit into here? And, you know, how are people going to be able to get to the high school? Um, so knowing where this is, rel you know, other side of the highway with the school, I, I'm, I'd like to, f I'd like to know that plan and before I can fully buy into this. So from a healthcare perspective, I love it. Um, but I just, we really have to look at the roads and look at traffic flow. Um, because I have some, I'm just really nervous about the day someone's going to rear end somebody at 50 miles an hour on that, on that highway. And I want to know how we're going to deal with this. So thank you. Uh, just to clarify one thing, uh, Mr. Sayer, the multifamily that's specified in the current plan, <coughs> is that senior living or is it just potential any multifamily? The, the, cur the, 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 the 06 plan had a kind of that more than medical focus to it. The proposed plan that uh, the developer submitted has the has a 15 acre piece that would be for uh, the medical clinic. There's approximately 48 acres of land that's planned as commercial. Uh, they have 21 and a half acres planned as multifamily and they have two separate stormwater areas, one that's five acres and one that's six acres that would be for stormwater purposes. Thank you. Uh, Alder Cole? Um, I, don't, I don't know if they've uh, conceptually thought about this yet, but is any of this multifamily more of workforce housing or is it going to be market rate or have they really thought about that yet? You know, I think, I think once again, this is pretty high level that they're kind of looking at just ideas that they have. Um, you know, I think they had a narrative that, um, you know, very kind of briefly described what they're looking at. Um, it doesn't get into kind of the exact type of housing, just looking at five to 700 type apartment units and other potential housing options. So I think, I think generally it's still pretty wide open what it could be. Um, Alder Journey, then Alder Posey. So um, I saw it in an earlier plan <coughs> by the plans for a big box store, but have those been eliminated or has that been eliminated? Mr. Sayer? Yeah, I think once again, it's kind of open to what it's going to be. What the applicant indicated in their description was looking at a, at a hotel potentially in this location, depending on market study, uh, looking at some type of large retail uh, user out here that would be approximately 100 to 200,000 square feet. Um, potential grocery, potential smaller multi-tenant retail, and potential office. Um, you know, this is pretty level, high-level concepts. I think they're kind of looking for that feedback to know what they can take back to the market ultimately, um, because market studies and the market's going to dictate exactly what that looks like. But uh, <coughs> I think that's a potential option of what they're considering is, is some type of large format retailer. Mr. Sayer, I think. The, I, my feeling was from plan commission that the plan commissioners would not support <coughs> a big box there. And I think pretty much everyone who said it was said no big box, so if that mm -hmm. helps. Although, a, as stated before, this is the feedback session, so if you would like or not like a big box store, now is the time uh, to say so. Um, anything further, Alder Journey? Only that I would not like a big box store. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alder Posey and then Alder Kemp. Thank you. Uh, Mike, I share uh, Alder Touche's concerns about traffic. You know, I've lived in District 1 as long as I've lived in Verona. 
and I back when Epic was two buildings, <laughs> and so I have seen those exits get more and more congested, and the roads get more and more congested, and you know, anytime there's any sort of backup, that road comes straight through town, and all that traffic comes straight through town, then we get backed up here in town. So I agree that we have to take that into concern with the development out there. Also, the other part is we do need to be aware as we're building more and more housing, our schooling, we are packing people into these wonderful developments, which I support what we have on the books, um, but we've got a lot on the books and people aren't in them yet. Um, families aren't in them yet, and we have to be aware that we have schools that are filling. Um, and what does that mean to our community? So I think that's something we need to remain aware of as we're approving more and more development. Thank you. Alder Kemp. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, on the whole, I really like the idea of the development, quite frankly, the idea of having more senior housing and particularly um, placing these people or allowing them, them to live in a space where they can be relatively close potentially to a health care provider. Um, I have to agree with, uh, with Alder Touche. Um, I'm just looking at the map. On the southeast corner, this five-acre space right here, looking at where the traffic comes off the highway, um, and then pretty quickly, once you get off the highway and take a right, you'd have to take another right probably to access this space here. Um, a lot of times people coming down 69 coming out of the city are coming pretty quick. Um, so that's something I would, you know, I'm a little concerned about coming off the highway and taking a left going back towards Fireman, Fireman's Park can be dodgy at times. I'm wondering what it's like when people are coming out of the city. Um, but outside of that, I, th I think it's a good concept. Um, I, I would also like to go on record saying I would not like to see a big box store on this on this property at all. Um, but otherwise, I think it's a, a pretty interesting concept. Alder Cole and then uh, myself. In addition to my support for more workforce housing, I also think that we need to look at um, transportation options as far as like mass transportation, like busing, especially if we're moving across the highway, we're talking about traffic, it's going to get worse. We're expanding outwards and if we're increasing our density, you know, with like 500 to 700 more multifamily apartments, I think we, a way to alleviate some traffic concerns would really be to look at uh, busing um, in conjunction with city of Madison or however that would work. But I think that would be a, a, a feasible <coughs> option. That's, that's what I would say. Um. I am going to repeat some of the stuff I said at Planning Commission, but yeah, I, w I would be definitely be open to a healthcare uh, center. I'm definitely definitely on board with that. I think we need another another facility in the city. Um, I'm still against the big box store. I don't think it's a good location. Um, I would be you know potentially in favor of multi-tenant um, retail. You know some some small scale stuff. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm open to the the, the multi-family uh, apartments. Although I, I would like to see if we have housing something. Um, that targets more of the middle middle of the market. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of different ways to get to affordability, uh, and I think you know if you look at kind of like supply and demand, when you're at the middle of the market, you you, you kind of help people below and above the middle by creating more supply. Um, but I mean, I'm I, I think I'm open to a lot of potential different different uses, but that's 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 just just a preference. I definitely want to see the um, Sugar River watershed protected. Um, and, and I share the comments Alder Touche, Alder Campbell, Alder Posey ha had mentioned about traffic just because as the area grows with, with what's already there in the high school, it, 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 it could get dicey and we don't want to create issues, issues for ourselves or uh, uh, other Verona residents. Um, other comments or questions from the council? Alder Gaskell and then Alder Journey. Um, I just want to make the point that we can plan for traffic and we can plan for the roads as these come online. I don't want to give the impression that we're, you know, we can't do any more development because we might be too, putting too many cars on the road. I mean, that's part of the development, it's part of looking at the traffic impact analysis. That's all part of the process. So we will get there. And um, I guess I just want to qualify that big box for me would include another large grocery store. I would not want to see another large grocery store as part of this development, which was specifically, I think, called out in the narrative. Thank you. Alder Journey. So I would just like to reinforce the comments on the preservation of the um, Sugar River watershed. 
um, and then also um, some plan <coughs> in terms of avoiding runoff so that other properties, either public or private, um, are not um, flooded. Uh, Alder Riki. I just um, echo a lot of what's already been said about um, not supporting a big box store, um, us supporting um, more workforce housing, and my biggest concern is the environmental impact of a development like this. Uh, <coughs> any other questions or comments from the council? I guess I'll add one more. Um, in line with Alder Cole's comment about transit, I think you, you know, depending on what kind of multifamily units go in there, it, it's entirely possible it could be filled with a bunch of people who work at Epic. Um, and it would be really nice if we could loop that into a bus route in town to kind of get it. So it, if if there's a couple big developments in Verona where people tend to work at Epic, it would be nice if they could get to their workplace um, by bus. Last chance for comments? Seeing none, we will... <coughs> Uh, anything further, Alder Gaskell? Uh, just that uh, the April Plan Commission meeting will be on Wednesday the 3rd instead of the 1st due to the election on the 2nd. Good reminder. Um, next, we'll move up uh, uh, on to uh, number 11, new business. Uh, item A is discussion and possible action regarding approval of the <coughs> operator licenses. Uh, Ms. Clark. Um, I need a motion, please, to approve operator license applications as presented by the city clerk. So moved. Motion by Alder Riki. Is there a second? Second of Alder Cronin. All those in favor of approving the operator licenses signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The operator licenses are approved. Next, we're on to item 12, adjournment. A motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Motion by Alder Cole. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Riki. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And we are adjourned. Thank you.